Okay, you guys, USMNT top 10, as usual. Good weekend. Not as great a weekend as maybe some recent weekends, but still a good weekend by our standards. So that's good to see. I just finished watching the Chicago Fire go to Atlanta. I think they should pay them, honestly. I think they should pay Atlanta a cleanup fee because they went to Atlanta and took a massive dump all over the field. Um, so not only should they pay a, a cleanup fee to Atlanta United, they should also extend the American Guardiola, Frank Klopas's contract even further. I know they recently extended it after four years of not making the playoffs, but I don't think that's enough. I don't, when, when somebody goes above and beyond to be, to meet your expectations and, and to do even more than you had already demanded, which is to be as miserable a failure as you possibly can, you, you need to reward that. And that's one of the problems with Chicago is they're not rewarding the guys who meet the expectations that they set. And so I think they need to really do that. Now is the time to give Heights an eight-year contract instead of a four-year contract. Give Frank Klopas a, a contract for life. I mean, every week this man goes above and beyond to meet the expectations set by the great and mighty Chicago Fire. And I think it's time to reward that even more than they already have, right? Um, so, but this is not a Chicago Fire stream. This is a USMNT Top 10 stream. Happy Easter, everyone. How are you doing? I still I still think it's been a good weekend overall. We have a good top 10. Juan Ramirez says, Pete, should the fire hire Frank Klopas after they fire Frank Klopas? I mean, that would even be better. Fire him, pay him out for the next four years, like you do when you fire somebody, and then give him another four years. That's the only way to keep a man like that in Chicago before some fourth division team comes calling for him. Right? So got it. You've got to, you know, you've got to make that happen. Uh, hey Pete, how's it going? I'm just watching your stream while doing Uber Eats. Also, I was watching the USA via Mexico stream and I'm still laughing about Dest working on his highlight reel. <laughs> Greg has risen, says Chris Johnson. Greg to Chicago. Oh, I actually think he would be good in Chicago. They would at least make the playoffs, you know, which is not hard. Just be in the top 70% of teams. Uh, let's see. AOP. Hey, Walter. Update on John Anthony Brooks. I have no update for you on John Anthony Brooks. Stephen Coons. Pete, you've called for Greg Berhalter to adjust his tactics to complement the strengths of his best players. Why not build around Tyler Adams' ability to control the middle of the field to free up our attackers? Yes, but then you would miss out on Giovanni Reyna playing left back to help in the build out. That would be hugely problematic to miss out on that. Why have Gio in and around the final third when you can have him combining with Anthony Robinson near the corner flag? Pete, did you get a haircut? Uh, I did, but a little while ago, a couple weeks ago. But thank you. You said looking great. Hey, Pete, do you know what the U.S. schedule looks like after the Copa? Uh, I don't know the exact schedule. I think in November we have Nations League again because it's an annual thing now. So we're going to have Nations League uh, quarterfinals against some team. We'll see who that is. But I think what I heard is in September and October, we're going to or organize some friendlies. And this is kind of where it gets tricky because Europe is going to have World Cup qualifying. South America is going to have World Cup qualifying. Asia is going to have World Cup qualifying. And Africa is going to have World Cup qualifying. So there aren't really that many, um, there aren't that many friendlies you can really have, at least not meaningful friendlies. So instead, we're going to organize friendlies with, get ready for it, Canada and Mexico. Because if there's any teams we need to play more, it is those two. Okay. Most of the USMNT came off the bench this weekend. has nothing to do with form. Yeah, the problem with our guys is they travel for the international break. So sometimes they get benched. And to be honest, I'm okay with like protecting our players a little bit as we get close to Copa. Because the last thing we need is any of our guys getting injured before Copa America. So if they just did a transatlantic flight and played two games, uh, I'm okay with them being benched. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thank you for the super chat. Matthew Juan Ramirez joined as a member. 
Thank you. Let's have a word from our sponsor, and then we will get started. Fantasy Sports is back with a new and improved Pick'em game across all sports that makes it easy to play fantasy sports with just a few clicks. Each sport allows you to build a parlay that includes between two and five predictions about the outcomes of player projections. As you would expect, the more picks you include, the greater the potential payout. Don't go crazy with it and play responsibly, but adding a few bucks here and there to a game gives it a little more excitement and stakes. Use my promo code 11YANKS or click the link in the description to start playing and Underdog will match whatever you put in your account up to $100. Enjoy! All right, and as Tack likes to say, no one gets rich off gambling. Let's see if I can do it like Tack. No one gets rich off gambling. So, hit that like button. All right, how much money have you lost using this betting app? No money have I lost. I've actually made money. Um, but yes, don't don't put a lot of money into it because it is just, you know, it's just for fun. I usually put like $5 down and then I make like 30 bucks if I win. All right. I heard the Morocco <laughs> friendly should be counted as a signature win. I saw that today from the gentleman over at the scuffed podcast claiming that that was a signature win. You guys. Okay. Let's start with the top 10. And first we have Diego Luna of real salt Lake came off the bench against St. Louis city and got a late game assist to Juan Arango to help real salt Lake win. 3-1. Played just 23 minutes, got one assist, one chance created, and one out of one successful dribbles. This was the assist. Again, the, this, the assist itself was nothing special. It was a good lateral pass to Arango, who was in space. Not sure what that defending is there, but you'll see this in the Patreon video, is he actually won the duel to win the ball and skipped past his player before he made that pass which gave the assist a little bit more juice. Um, so, yeah, that's been good to see. Giovanni Reyna, and this is going to come with a little bit of an asterisk because typically if you are not, if you are an attacking player and you don't get a goal contribution, you are uh, you don't make the top 10. But there were several wins. He played his first meaningful minutes for Nottingham Forest, right? A good half an hour. He played well. For the most part, I don't think he was outstanding. Uh, but you could see the way that it, they changed when Giovanni Reina came on. They had more of the ball. He was able to set tempo. Uh, sure, he got the you know hockey assist on the goal. I don't really count that because that was nothing special. A good decision to make the pass, but it was a lateral pass. Um, he had a good shot um, that was saved by the keeper after creating some space for himself and just generally was a positive impact in the attacking third. Hopefully this means more minutes for him, but he played 30 minutes, had 100% passing accuracy. So didn't misplace any passes. One shot attempted one out of two successful dribbles did not win any of his tackles. Um, three recoveries, three out of six ground duels. One, there was endeavor. I will say in his defensive work. Now you don't put Giovanni Reyna on the field for his defensive work, but one of the complaints about him is that he's, you know, not always as quick to get back and defend when the ball is turned over. And, and and in this game, he certainly was. He was much more involved. You can see it in the three out of six ground duels. One uh, did commit two fouls. There was a lot more endeavor from him defensively. Uh, and that's good to see. Whether or not he's ever going to be a great defender, of you know, is, is uh, probably not going to happen. But he got minutes. He was involved. I doubt he's going to start. Um, because Nuno Santos is very stubborn about his preferred 11, but at least if he can start getting 30 minutes off the bench instead of four minutes or whatever it was before, then that's good to see. This was the shot that he took. Again, this is the still motion of the, uh, or the screen capture of the actual shot, but he beat his man first to create space to then take this shot um, with his left foot. Speed of play was a little bit of an issue for him in this game. Um, it's just, you know, it's the EPL, right? It's punishing. It's very punishing. They, they don't ever change the tempo in the EPL. Everything is just not, you know, 90 miles an hour, go, 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 go. And while I don't think that suits his game at all, to be honest, I do think that it's good for him if he is playing to be able to experience that environment and to try to learn to be 
um, effective in that environment. And, and so he does manage to sneak. Sorry about that. Don't know what happened there. He did manage to sneak into the top 10 also because there weren't as many strong candidates as we've seen in the past. Uh, let me get that slideshow back up because that just disappeared for no reason. When are they announcing the Olympic team? Oh, Ken, that will not happen until probably after Copa America. So early, early July, very likely. Early July, early to mid July is when we'll get the Olympic team roster. Um, let's get this slideshow back up here. Al Weinstein says Geo is responsible for his situation. Agreed. Agreed. He certainly is. He was the one who decided to go to Nottingham Forest. And then Ken De King uh, jumped in with Geo is also responsible uh, for. Exactly. Exactly. If you make the decision to get a terrible loan. Effective. But I think this will be a good example. Um, Joe Hernandez asks, my brother keeps on talking about Castellanos. What's going on with him? So Tati Castellano is a Argentine uh, player who has recently become USMNT or becoming USMNT eligible. He's at, over at Lazio, uh, 25 years old, hasn't been prolific for Lazio this season. Uh, I think he has something like three goals and four assists overall. So maybe Balogun level player, but, you know, more players. I, if he wants to represent the U.S., I have no problem with it. More players is always better. I don't know if he's necessarily an upgrade on on Balogun, but certainly having competition is good and he's not going to play for argentina so chris johnson said he also never even replied to matt turner's text what a villain georgie mihailovic who is not a usmnt level player did have a good game three goal contributions for the colorado rapids two goals and one assist in their three two win over steve Chirundolo's lafc um, also had six out of 10 accurate crosses, uh, three out of five accurate long balls, three out of seven ground, ground duels, one and two fouls drawn. <laughs> Yosef says USSF messing with the stream. Um, this was the first assist. It came off a corner, uh, a, a well-delivered corner, I would say well-placed. This was probably the best of the three goal contributions. This direct free kick that had, uh, uh, Hugo Lloris completely bamboozled. And then his next goal came from a headed knockdown and he got ahead of world-class Liverpool level defender, Aaron Long to finish that nicely and help the Crapids get their first home win of the season. Good for Georgie. Look, Georgie is not, should not be in the USMNT pool at all. Um, but he can still get credit in the top 10 when he has an exemplary game, which he certainly did today. Serginho Dest versus NEC Nijmegen, Nijmegen, probably is how you pronounce that, I believe, played 90 minutes, one chance created, one penalty won, five out of nine successful dribbles. That was a match high. Uh, zero out of 10 accurate crosses. That is not a stat that you like to see, but I would say this is the exception rather than the rule when it comes to Serginho Dest's season. Won nine out of 18 ground duels and had the most fouls drawn of anybody in the game. It was a turning point in this game. If only Luke de Jong had scored the penalty. He was he received this ball way on the left wing, dribbled inside and got hacked down. And this was still the 78th minute. So if Luke de Jong had scored this, I think it really would have turned the tide of the game. And there's a good chance that PSV could have equalized and kept their uh, unbeaten streak going. However, that did not happen. Luke de Jong's penalty was saved. It was a very poor penalty. And PSV Eindhoven will not go unbeaten in the Eredivisie season. But Serginho Dest did play his part. Jeff Carey, Spicy Jeff, says, Hey, Pete, 
It looks like Gio and Gibbs White seem to have good chemistry on the field together. Yes. No, I agree. I thought when the two, I think what actually happened was they pulled Gibbs White back a little bit to play more as an eight and then Gio Reyna a little higher up the field, or sometimes they would interchange. It would it would sort of be like a seesaw movement where when then Gibbs White would push up, Gio would drop back and help in the build out. And I thought they had good chemistry, and I thought you could see the way that Nottingham Forest played, and certainly their attacking, attacking impetus changed when the two of them um, were playing together. So hopefully Nuno Santos sees that and maybe gives Gio a start. Nuno is a very stubborn guy, so personally, I doubt that's going to happen, but I'm at least hopeful for another 30-minute cameo for Gio, and if he continues performing the way he is and perhaps gets a few goal contributions, then uh, who knows? Who knows? But he has to, you know, the big job is to try to make sure Forrest don't get relegated. Uh, so Cameron Carter Vickers versus Livingston played 90 minutes, kept clean sheet as Celtic won this game 3-0. Completed 97 passes. That is a very high passing rate for any center back. Five out of eight accurate long balls. Two out of two successful dribbles. Two out of three ground duels won. And five out of six aerial duels won. I am always in awe of Cameron Carter Vickers' aerial prowess because he's not that tall for a center back. He's only about six foot or six foot one. So to win as many aerials as he does, he's got a real leap on him, CCV. Hopefully he stays healthy until Copa America because after this last camp, there are lots of question marks about some of our center backs. Number five, is it too early to call it a comeback? Yes, it certainly is. But Conrad De La Fuente, who has been drifting at sea for the last couple of years, got two goals for Ibar in the Spanish second division off the bench, played just 19 minutes, got two goals, one chance created, one out of one successful dribble, and won half of his four ground duels. Conrad is a, a sad tale of, you know, expectations not met and potential not reached. But you never know. Could he turn it around? Let's see how old Conrad is now. The talent is undoubtedly there, right? We all know this. Um, ment mentality is not there. And discipline is not there. Uh, so he's 22. So it's not like he's, I mean, he's not young anymore, but it's not like he's finished. Let's see how he does the rest of the season. This is the Spanish second division, so we must keep that in mind. Uh, his second goal was the nicer of the two goals. The ball was played in, and, and once again, you can't really see it in this screenshot, but the goalkeeper comes out and completely blocks the shot. If he had just hit it, the goalkeeper would have blocked it for sure, but he took a really nice soft touch with his right foot that shifted it onto his left and almost in the same motion shifted onto his left and scored. It was, yeah, you'll see it on the Patreon breakdown, which is out early, by the way, the Patreon breakdown, you'll see it. Uh, if anybody wants to go see it, it was a really, really nice goal. This one was, you know, less nice, really just a good run into the box and good quality finish. Now for me to start really tracking Conrad again, I'm going to need to start doing him I need to see him start doing it consistently, at least in the second division. And then from there, maybe one day can work his way back up to a top five league or perhaps the Eredivisie. Um, so don't get too excited about Conrad, but he'll get his flowers today. Julian Vivas says, do you think Union Berlin can buy Brendan Aronson? He's been better these past few games. Yeah, I think Aronson's going to have to show up big time for the rest of the season. He's had two good games for them all season. So, you know, let's pump the brakes on that a little bit. But also, if they do decide they want him, it's going to be dependent very much on what Leeds puts as an asking price because Bundesliga teams typically don't have enough money. Uh, Liverpool versus Bot Iron in the Europa League could be better than the Champions League. All right. Haji Wright, 23 goal contributions on the season, got his 16th goal for Coventry City, uh, played 90 minutes on the left wing, uh, scored their third goal. In the, They did not play Wolves. There's always one mistake. I think this stream is not right if there isn't at least one mistake. They played Huddersfield. Um, one chance created, one out of two successful dribbles, two out of 11 ground duels, not great. Three out of four aerial duels won. That is great. And two fouls drawn. It was a good goal. This wasn't some tap in at the far post. This was uh, 
you know, he received the ball at the edge of the box and, you know, literally he, he received it in a standing position. It's not like he received it in speed, you know, in his stride at pace from a standing position, he beat his man and then put it. I actually think the goalkeeper could have done better on this one, but nonetheless, this was a good goal by Haji Wright and with his weak foot, no less making a strong, strong case to be brought to Copa America as both winger and striker depth. Tyler Adams makes the top three. Another mistake. Two mistakes so far, guys. Two mistakes so far in this uh, this PowerPoint. Unlike Greg, I am not the master of PowerPoint presentations. Um, was really, really strong in Bournemouth's uh, 2-1 win over Everton, I believe it was. Yeah, Everton. Played 90 minutes. One chance created. Four out of seven accurate long balls. Three out of four tackles won. Seven out of eight ground duel won ground duels one there is nothing more tyler adams-esque than winning ground duels two out of four aerial duels one and two fouls drawn tyler adams is back and starting in the premier league and he looks very much despite having a very very long injury he looks very much like tyler adams that we saw at, at leeds at you know according to fought mob he was man of the match i don't think he was actually man of the match though uh on the official um in the official game itself, but definitely was a very, very strong performance, all action, defensively solid, protecting that back line everywhere on the field. You know, I don't think he's ever going to be a tempo setting player unless the tempo is, you know, run through them, but man, it's good to see him back. It's good to see him playing well, and let's hope he can stay healthy uh, going into Copa America. Joshua Sargent didn't make the camp because of an injury, but he is back and scored the equalizing goal against um, Plymouth Argyle. Played 90 minutes, one goal, one out of two successful dribbles, four out of six ground duels, one, two out of two aerial duels, one, and drew three fouls, which was a match high. That is his 16th goal contribution of the season considering he was injured for most of the season that really really is magnificent from josh Sargent. uh he has one goal contributions every 89 minutes that he's been on the field for norwich city and yes it is the championship but if him and haji keep performing at the rate that they are come the end of the season um it's reasonable to think that there could be interest if their teams don't get promoted uh, right now, Norwich is in sixth, so they are just there in the playoff promotion contenders, and Coventry City is seventh. Uh, so we're not quite sure if they're going to get promoted. I'm probably going to say no, to be honest, because I don't think either team is a, a true promotion contender. But if they don't, there might be interest from teams. I know Brentford are looking at Josh Sargent. I'm not so sure either of these guys are Premier League level players. Remember, there is a big, big gap between the championship and the Premier League. And I think Sargent, a couple of you guys are saying this too. Uh, S27 says Sargent should go back to the Bundesliga. I'd like Hoffenheim for Sargent. I agree. I think I think that, you know, a top five league could be good for both of these guys, but probably not the Premier League. I just think the Premier League is so punishing. It is played at an absurd pace. You have no time at all on the ball. And I think the Bundesliga suits both of these guys much better. Both of them have played in the Bundesliga in the past albeit when they were younger. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. For right now, it's good to see Josh Sargent doing so well. And this was a nice finish. It came off of a corner. He started his run from the top of the box and was tracked the entire way by a defender, but still managed to connect on the corner and not only connect on it, but squeeze it through the defenders to put it in and make it 1-1. Norwich went on to win this game 2-1. Much maligned Fowler in Balogun. Scored a brace against Mets, despite only playing the last 25 minutes of the game. Uh, worked hard and was able to get two goals. This was the first one. This was crazy, crazy mistake by the goalkeeper. Uh, the ball was played back to him by his own defender. And I think he thought that Balogun was going to come across him to try to, you know, block the, the goal kick or to block the punt. But And so he tried to dummy him by like scooping it backwards toward the defender, the exact spot that Balogun was coming from. And all Balogun had to do was stick his foot out. He was there to close down the angle, not to block the punt. He was there to close the angle down, stick his foot out, and it ricocheted into the goal. That was his opening goal. 
And then the second goal was a nice finish um, off of a corner. It was actually headed on. It was not direct from a corner. It was flicked on with a header, and then he finished it. So Balogun is now eight and six. Eight goals, six assists on the season. This is a poor season, but he is already surpass or is about to surpass. Uh, no, it's eight and five. I'm sorry, eight and five. He's at 13 goal contributions. He will very likely surpass 15 goal contributions for the second season in a row in a top five league. And Tack made a good point on Twitter. You know, we we um, were, were harsh and were critical on Balogun, which in some ways is very fair. But how many of our strikers would get two consecutive seasons of getting at least 15 goal contributions in a top five league? And I think right now the answer is probably no one. Um, certainly not until they prove it. So, it's been a rough season for Balogun, but it's not, it's definitely not, um, it's been disastrous. And I think a lot of it is him adapting to the Monaco style of playing, which is, doesn't really suit him that well, but is good for him. Uh, and also missing all those penalties didn't help, right? I think he missed what, four, four penalties or three at least. So that would all of a sudden, you know, rack up those stats a bit better. Um, but either way, it's good to see Balogun back. Hopefully that gives him a confidence boost. Um, and hopefully he can close out the season strongly and maybe head for, you know, 20 goal contributions total with Monaco. Monaco are very likely to make the Champions League. And we can have a lot of our top guys playing in the Champions League next year, especially now that Juve, you know, aren't under that ban. But they may not even make the top four with how shit Juve has been. I don't understand how Allegri is still in charge at Juve, guys. But uh, it is what it is. So a good weekend overall. A strong top ten. All of those goals are available on the Patreon in their full glory replays uh, with my commentary. Can't do that on YouTube, but I can do it on Patreon. It's three dollars a month if anybody wants to check that out thank you to everybody who is there and who helps to support the channel that way i really do appreciate it um trying to think andrew he had a game where he missed two and then missed another the next game yeah that's three p what do you think of damien bows i think you mean damien downs he's a dual nat that plays for cone fc in the bundesliga yeah uh, I think he did get a goal already so far this season. I have not really seen him play extensively, so I'm hesitant to comment on him. Um, but yeah, so definitely somebody to watch, someone to track, right? I mean, that's probably the fact that he's flying under the radar is just the fact that our player pool is getting better. You know, somebody tweeted tweeted out yesterday that, you know, Quinn Sullivan was unlucky to not make the Olympic team. And it's just too much competition and and you know i agree but at the same time if we really want to be a top 10 team in the world we're gonna have to get used to the idea that in every age group under 23 under 20 under 17 and with the senior team there's going to be fierce competition for spots and good players will miss out on roster spots simply because there's too much competition that's true for every great you know big big team in the world with lots and lots of talent so I'm sure it's sad for those certain players, but this is part of the process as we evolve slowly into uh, we're not a top 10 team in the world yet. It's not with Fred Berhalter in charge, but our player pool is definitely headed in the right direction with both recruitment and development. So it's something, um, it's definitely something to get used to and to track. Chris Johnson says, who do you think is better, Taylor Booth or Griffin Yao? Taylor Booth, for sure. I, I think I don't really rate Griffin Yao very highly. You know, nice goal versus France's under-23 team notwithstanding. Um, so, yeah, Taylor Booth. The problem with Taylor is he can't stay healthy. He starts making a little bit of progress, and then, bam, he goes down with an injury. Yeah, so sometimes the best availability, sometimes the best ability is availability. How many MLS players make the Copa roster, says USA Expat? Um, Miles, for sure. Is Greg's new is Miles is the new Aaron Long for Greg. Like, no matter what he does, he's going to be there. Probably Drake Callender. The third goalkeeper is probably going to be an MLS goalkeeper because I think that, you know, Gaga and Schulte are probably going to be with the Olympic team. So, one for sure. 
Um, we'll see about the third goalkeeper. It's going to be Turner, Horvath, and one more. My guess is that one more is going to be either Celentano or Calendar. To me, it's like, take your pick, you know, take your pick. Um, either is the same as the third goalkeeper. I'm not that worried. I do think Schulte should be with the team after the Olympics. Yeah, I think Schulte's going to be, oh yeah, it could be Zach Steffen, Chris. Zach Steffen had a good game for the Colorado Rapids yesterday. I watched that game, Colorado versus LAFC. He actually saved Colorado's bacon quite a bit. And I, I will say it is MLS, so the pressure was not there very much, but he did look quite good with his feet. That's one thing that when when Stefan is confident, he can look quite good with his feet. Certainly he's better with his feet than Turner or Horvath. That is not under question. Um, so, yeah, you're right. If he continues to have a really good season, Stefan could end up being the third goalkeeper. That's fair. Um, so, yeah, my guess is two. Miles Robinson and one of the goalkeepers will be MLS players. Other than that, there's nobody that even has a prayer, to be honest. Maybe Dewan Jones is a backup left back, but to be honest... At this point, I wonder if we should even bring a backup left back. Considering that both Scally and Des can play left back, we have three guys that can play on the two fullback positions. Plus, you also have McKenney and Wea who can play fullback in, if you absolutely need them to in a pinch. Do you really want to waste a spot? If you can only take 23, do you really want to waste a spot on a guy who's definitely a, a, a big drop-off? Maybe Trusty could be a guy who play left back if, if he's the fourth center back. But if we bring Trusty MXRS, then we cannot we cannot bring Greg's favorite boy Miles. So that's an issue. I would use the spot, you know, the backup left back spot. I would use it on an extra midfielder, which will probably allow us to bring Luca De La Torre, um, who is currently, if you look at our top, maybe not in our top six midfield anymore, just because of you know the progress that we've made uh, with that midfield player pool. So I would probably just bring seven midfielders um, and then knowing that both Scally and Dest could back up A-Rob on the left and Wea can also play left fullback. And then, yeah, if you bring Austin Trusty as the fourth center back, he could also play left back in a pinch. I like that idea a lot, MXRS. Uh, Pete, any words from Luca Coliosho? Luca Kelly Coliosho is injured. I have no idea when he's going to be back, though. Not a clue. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging. Happy Easter. Thanks to our sponsors, both Underdog and Bet Online, for helping to sponsor the channel. We very much appreciate it. Smash that like button if you haven't already, guys, and I will hopefully talk to you soon. Oh, yeah. And go sign up for Patreon if you want, if you would like to see all of those goals in full HD glory with my commentary. Talk soon.